Hey everyone, it's Joe with Sign Tracker. Thanks for joining me for this week's webinar. In this webinar, we're going to do an overview of the job flow in Sign Tracker. Um, we will be covering a little bit on how to quote inside the job, but as far as detailed instructions on how to quote, please join us for the webinar that goes over quoting in detail. I'll also be going over a little bit of the setup on um, things like tasks and job flow board and that, but um, there are also some detailed videos you can watch on setup. So anyway, let's get started. Thanks again for joining me today. So first, when you open Sign Tracker, I know some folks, it just really depends on what you like for a view. So some folks really like a dashboard view. Um, and on the dashboard, you'll see a job overview. So you can see everywhere, um, every stage that your job's in and everywhere where jobs could be possibly getting stuck. So then you could address those bottlenecks, right? So if you're looking at production, you say, well, I have 17 jobs in the production stage and you know it looks like nine of them are past due so i you know you can start asking the questions well what's going on you know do i need to outsource some of this work do i need to you know allow for some overtime with my guys or do i need to you know hire a few more folks or whatever so anyway um that's what the chart here is for uh, also any of the jobs that you're associated with are going to show up under your jobs here and you can click any of these and they'll take you to your jobs also on your dashboard too if you have calendar events or things that are um you know that you're that are scheduled they're going to show up here on the dashboard you can add new people and companies to the contact section you can create calendar events or actually start a new job there are links to to uh, training videos and recorded webinars so and then join one of our weekly uh, webinars usually they're wednesday afternoons at 2 30 central time you're welcome to come to any or all of them uh, if you can stand hanging out with me that much but also in the chat uh, tool. This is a great way to communicate with us. So you can ask questions and it goes to the whole team. Uh, also, you'll see the webinars that you can join from here as well. So then you have a calendar view. Now the calendar view, again, you know, it's your preference. So some folks really like to look at the calendar. So in here you can see whatever tasks that are assigned to you. You can actually also look at all the unassigned tasks too. And you can set up multiple categories. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, manage the categories. Um, it has a week view and a day view. And you can print these calendars as well. Uh, jobs, now if you change the due date of a job here, it'll change it all the way through the system. So it'll change it on the job list view as well as inside the job and the job flow board. You can also open these and just go to the job directly if you need to do some work on it. And the same with tasks, you can go straight to the tasks and from here. And tasks, same thing, you can change you know due dates of the tasks. So let's just talk about contacts for a second. A um, couple different things. Contacts, if you decide to sync with QuickBooks, your contacts are going to come over from QuickBooks into Sign Tracker, and then you can merge them and all that. So if you've already set up some contacts in Sign Tracker, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, you'll be able to deal with the duplicates once you actually do the, uh, the merging or the um, integration rather with QuickBooks. And we do sync with QuickBooks online which is my personal preference if you're using desktop. Um, it's just that because they're both web apps, they tend to talk to each other a little bit more seamlessly. However, we have gone through a lot of development to make sure that Sign Tracker does work with the desktop version as well. So, and, and we're, update on the, we're updated on the latest version of um, QuickBooks Desktop. But just to, just to show you really fast, so say for example, you have a client, uh, Allison Design. I'm just gonna pull them up. So a lot of sign shops, and I'm sure your, your sign shop is no exceptions, you might have clients like design firms, architect firms, general contractors, schools, whatever, and you probably deal with multiple people at that uh, company or that organization. So when you go into the company itself, you can see all the jobs that you've done with that company, and then you can go to each individual and see the job history with just that individual as well. So, and this gets tagged, I'll show you when we're setting up a new job, this actually gets tagged when you're setting up the job. So let's go to the jobs tab, because that's really where you're gonna spend the majority of your time in Sign Tracker. Uh, when I had my sign shop, I, I pretty much came to work every morning, and the first thing I did was I opened my job list. 
And the job list is just, you know, work in progress view, basically, so whip view of, of your jobs. And these are all the jobs that are active. So your archive jobs are not going to show up here. So when you do complete a job, you can archive it, and then you can browse your archives, which looks just like this, actually. And the one thing nice about this is when you do go to archive a job, say if, if in a year from now that customer calls you, all the information about that job is there and you can actually clone it. So under actions you can go clone and it'll allow, allow you to clone any job whether they're active or archived and you can clone the tasks, the notes, and the quotes. What that'll do is it'll actually copy the job, give it a new job number, and then it'll drop it into the open bid column or the opportunity column, whatever you decide you want to name your columns. So okay, so the reason why I liked the list view every day I had it open was because I could primarily just search anything. So say for example, I was doing, um, you know, I had to work on Jen's Cupcake Factory. It was a banner job or whatever. I could come here and it would easily filter it out. And I could do things too from here. Like so if I wanted to change from stage to stage here, so that's going to change it on the job flow board as well. I can adjust the due date if I need to from here. And also, if you're looking at all your jobs, say, for example, you're in sales and you just want to see you know, all your open bids. So you can sort these out by stage. So I only have you know, one job in open bids as a salesperson. You're fired. Uh, but then you, have, you can look at all your jobs and you know, ready for quotes or ready for designs. And again, you set these stages up in the job flow board any way you want. And setting up stages, by the way, it's in the setup. Under settings, you'll see it in there, job flow columns. You can add additional columns and you can you can organize them by your workflow. Let's go to the job flow board actually. I'm on a Mac, so if you're on a PC, I want to say it's the control key, it's the command key for Macintosh users. So if I hold down the command key, I can go to the job flow board and it's going to open up a separate tab. So basically this is just a different view of the job list. I love this view for production meetings. I know some of our sign shops have this on a large monitor and they have it in their shop and it's a great visual and everyone can see exactly what's going on in each stage of production. So when you start a brand new job, it's going to automatically drop it in the open bid column. So open bid, some shops like to call it an opportunity. It's just basically we would we still have it so that you set up a job in open bid and re the reason why especially in the sign industry you tend to have to do tasks before you give the um, customer a price um, unless you just have really sim simple you know price lists for like a 4 by 8 banner or 18 by 24 core plus sign or whatever for the most part you're still collecting some information from the customer whether it's their contact information their logos or artwork um, so when you set up a new job even though it's not sold, it's going to land in the open bid column. If for some reason you don't get it, it's it's not really a big deal. You can just move it into archive and save it. And it's good to save that because if the customer does call back in six months and says, hey, I'm ready to do that now, you'll still have all the information. So each one of these columns represents a stage of production, right? So open bid, we just talked about, ready for design, ready for quotes. And again, when you first start Sign Tracker, it's going to say open bid, pre-production, production, install delivery, and close out. And that's how we used to have our structure at our sign shop. I added these ready for design, ready for quotes, um, subcontract versus production. So say, for example, a portion of your work, you end up subcontracting it out. So you can put it in the subcontract column. And these job cards just slide from column to column. So, and on these job cards, you can see uh, who the customer is, the job number, job name, notes. You can add more notes if you want to. That's that's pretty much usually a description of the, of the project. You can see tasks. So as the tasks get completed in real time, you'll start, you'll, you'll get updated on, um, on the, where, where all the tasks are at as far as the, uh, you know, this getting them finished or percentage of completion is what I'm trying to say. Um, you can also, uh, assign due dates from here. And, and then again, if it's ready, say you're a person in that sells signs, you sold it, and but you're not res necessarily responsible for uh, assigning a due date or putting it into production. You can just mark it as ready for next stage. It's going to put a nice big, big green border around it. And then from there, you can move it into pre-production.
So pre-production is generally anything that you do to a job before you actually move it into production. So it might be, you know, if you're subcontracting it out, it might be preparing the production files or um, getting some work orders together or purchase orders together or whatever you need to do to get the files over to your subcontractor or the same with production, just getting everything ready for production. Sometimes jobs in pre-production can get put on hold too. So let's say, you know, let's say you do electric signs and you put it on hold, big red border around it because you're pending the permit or you're, pen you're pending, um, you know, a final color approval from the client or whatever. And then again, you can unblock it. And then when it's ready to move into production, you move it into production. Generally, by this point, you've assigned a due date to it as well. So you can assign a due date to it. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then as it just moves through production, the goal is to get, you know, get it to the uh, closeout stage. And at the closeout stage, you know, all your tasks should be completed, maybe with the exception of one which is collect final balance, but you're assuming that at the closeout stage, your customer is super happy and you're just uh, waiting to get paid. So the other thing about the job flow board that's nice too, is it allows you to um, control resources, right? So say for example, this job, this four by eight, you know, real estate sign, you have a flatbed printer and it's a small sign, it's a good customer and you wanna get it knocked out because this Rich's Oil Company is a huge amount of printing that has to take place and it's gonna tie up your flatbed or your, or your digital printer or whatever for a couple days. You can slide this above it, knock it out first, and then you know deliver that to the customer, get paid, which helps with cash flow, and then tie up your printer for a couple days on the bigger jobs. So it really helps you address bottlenecks, manage resources, and then just a great visual for moving through stages of production. Okay, so I'm going to get out of the job flow board, and that's that's what. Oh, I should say one more thing about the job flow board. One of the reasons why I loved it so much, it's great for production meetings. So at our shop, how we did it is we some sign shops have production meetings every single day, and if that's you, bravo. We never did, but we would have ours Monday afternoon, and so after lunch, we would basically have a huge production meeting where you know the project managers and salespeople and a designer would sit down and would really go through each job, kind of organize them by priority, see what maybe they're getting hung up on, and would pretty much talk about each job that was active. Uh, and then we then, you know, they would go about the rest of the day just, you know, following up with customers or whatever we had to do. And then that gave us all of Monday afternoon, all of Tuesday, and all of Wednesday to really bust out a bunch of work. And then Thursday mornings, we would have, we called it a stand-up meeting. And in the stand-up meeting, you know, we would pretty much basically just look at things that were kind of getting stuck or clogged up. We wouldn't necessarily go over every single job, uh, but we would at least uh, try to addre address, you know, bottlenecks or what was getting stuck. So anyway, that's the job flow board. Um, Again, you know, it, it, and there's a couple things, you know, you can, if you want to look at uh, all your jobs collapse to give you a little bit more real estate, you don't have to look at every single column. So if you want to shut off the archived and shut off the open bid, maybe you don't deal with any open bid, you only deal with just production. So you can do that. And this filters and things too. So if, you know, you just want to look at the jobs that are for you, or again, filter out a particular customer, you can do that for, for the, for the job flow board, as well as for the um, job list. So let's go back to our job list. So let's start, um, let's start a new job. So under the job tab again, we're going to say new job. Again, I'm in a Mac, so the command key, it's control if you're in a PC. It's going to, and that's just a browser behavior, but it's going to open up a new tab. So now I have this brand new job, and this is what it looks like. So I can name this job, and so we'll name it um, Bill's Auto Banner. So I'm going to copy Bill's Auto so you guys don't have the pain of watching me type really slow. And I'm going to come here to the client info and I'm going to go Bill's Auto. Well, Bill's Auto is not in the system. So what we want to do here is we want to add a new company. Now, if someone was just calling in and you don't want to take the time to capture all this information, you don't have to. You can always come back and do it later. And when you add it here, by the way, it's going to automatically add it into the contact section as well. So uh, contact info, I always encourage people at least, you know, get a phone number and an email if you can. Bill at billauto.com. 
So at least you have some general contact information. You, like I said, you can always come back here later on and do that. Now, this job is tagged to, uh, to Bill's Auto. So it's going to be in their history. It's going to set up the new client automatically. And then you're going to have this particular job tagged. Now, if you want to, if you want to take Bill and let's say Bill's last name is Otto. Uh, now it's going to set up a contact, and and if you want to, you know, have a, if he has a different email or whatever, that's fine. You can add it here. But now it's gonna it's gonna tag the job to uh, to the company and the contact. And again, for maybe a one off like this, it's not as important. But certainly for property management companies or architectural firms or or places that you know, if you have maybe city jobs that we have multiple contacts that you deal with, you want to make sure you do that. Uh, this is a product or a service job. We're going to say product, and that just really shows up on the calendar a different color. If you know who the project manager is going to be, I'm going to say Joe is the project manager and Joe is the sales rep. Generally, when you're setting up a job for the first time, unless it's a customer you know and you say, hey, sure, Bill, no worries. I can get that busted out in a week for you. Okay, you can assign a due date, but generally it's you, you kind of assign that later on the job flow board or in the or in the job list. And let's say uh, Bill is going to pick up the banner so we don't have to have a location address. We'll submit it and there's your new job. Now on the job flow board, this is going to drop this into the open bid column, the top space. So if you have 10 different jobs on the job flow board in the open bid column, this one's going to put it in the top slot. And again, from here, if you want, you can change the stages of production. You can adjust the due date here. So but this is basically a summary page. It's going to timestamp it so you're going to know exactly who and when this job was created. I like to call this the electronic job folder. So basically this is where you keep everything organized in this job. So you create tasks. Now tasks kind of like quoting, they're template driven. So you can set up templates for any type of product. So I'll just show you this really fast. We know this is a banner job, so I pick banner. Super simple, right? You have one, two, three, four different tasks that have to get done. These tasks can be assigned to someone in the shop. They can have a separate due date from the due date of the project. And um, and then they can also have notes, right? Say say this is a survey or whatever or anything, and you want to uh, you want to have the person that you assign this task to to see you before they get started, and so you can write a little note on it. Now these can be um, these task templates can be super simple. You can build them, you know, just a general one. So say, you know, for a banner, or for a core plus sign, or for a real estate sign, you know, the steps of production are pretty close to the same. So you can just build a general um, commercial task list, for example. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete these just for a second. I know there's only four of them. Be patient. Here we go. All right. So I, I just deleted those four tasks. But I just wanted to show you let's say a large project. So if you do, if you do larger projects, like say channel letter projects or monument signs, you can get really extensive on these task lists. You can go initial client meetings, survey and code checks, power requirements, install quotes if you sub the install out, or so you can create these very, you know, the landlord approvals, um, collecting deposits, submitting for permits, all of it. You can make them pretty extensive and then all of these can be assigned to people. So once, a task is assigned to somebody, they're going to get an email reminder. But here's the other tab that I would keep open all day long. So I'm going to go back to my job list. I would keep my job task uh, view open all day long. So I would bounce back and forth. I'm going to slide this over. Again, a new, new tab. I would bounce back and forth between my job list view and my job tasks. And now if you're managing everybody in the shop and you want to see what's going on, you can uh, basically take, say, all employees. But if you're logged in as yourself, it's going to automatically take you to your tasks. And and um, and then you can look at tasks that are just due today. So now, I, oh, I have nothing. I'm going fishing because I have like zero to do today. So this would look a lot sexier. Obviously, this is my demo account. So, you know, I don't keep up with all my tasks in my demo account. But let's, so I'll just go, I'll go have any time and have any status. So now you can see what it would look like. Just say, say if these were all open, you know, tasks, but you can see like these don't have due dates assigned to them, but, but I can assign due dates here, 
usually by the time they make it to this master list, whoever's setting up the job has already assigned them to somebody with an individual due date. But this is a great way to kind of just keep track of everything that you have to work on. Um, and then you can, you know, you can go back to the job from here. Uh, once a task is completed, I can say done, and what that's going to do, it's going to cross it off. And then on the job flow board, for example, if you have 10 tasks and five of them are done, then 50% of the job tasks going to be done. So you can track that in real time on the job flow board. So that's your task list. And if you're a person that likes to have my your little to-do list, list printed, so you can just kind of check it off during the day and then maybe come back here at the end of the day and you can, um, you know, you can go ahead and enter in, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, check them off or whatever. So you can print this if you'd like to. All right, so I'm going to get out of here. Um, next is notes on a job. So any note that you take, uh, it's going to blah, blah 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 and I'm going to add the note it's going to go ahead and timestamp the note who took it and then the note itself and you can edit those I'll tell you I loved this for emails because I don't it's just probably me man because I'm old school but um, I would get emails and I use I use Gmail and I don't know about if you guys use Gmail but the threads would get so long when you were communicating back and forth with a customer on a particular project that inevitably I would, you know, say, oh man, I know they approved that size banner. Or I know they approved that color red. So what I started doing was any single time that a customer would send me an email that was an approval of something on the project, I would automatically just um, copy and paste the entire email here. And then I just would not lose it. I lived on this. Attachments. So you can click here, uh, you can attach, um, let's say I'm going to attach this little sign project, oops, sorry. Right now there's a limit of um, 10 megs per attachment. Um, we are working on expanding those capabilities, so anyway, uh, let's, try a, let's try a different one. I did that on purpose so you'd know. Let's see if this is uh, under 10. Yeah, this is, so we'll, we'll take this one. This is a banner. So now it's attached in your job. So this is a great place to attach, you know, job files and artwork and uh, completion photos or survey photos. And then you can always, you know, click it and you can see, you can, you can open it on your browser here so you can see the drawing. And then you can download it from here if you like or print it. Um, the other thing that's nice too is if you if you have a smartphone, which I think almost everyone does at this point, um, you can open this job on your smartphone. So if you were taking pictures, for example, you could come in and you could, um, if you were out in the field, you could take all your pictures, open this up in your browser on your phone, click this little gray square, and it's going to automatically navigate to your camera, and then you can upload all your survey photos. So if you are out in the field and you are going to visit two or three different sites and taking pictures of doors and measurements and all that, also, and I'll show you the, um, the survey sheets in a minute under the forms here, I would, you know, I would actually print the survey forms myself. Uh, they just were easier for me to do it that way, but if, you, if you'd rather work off an iPad or whatever, that's fine too. And I would... Um, have a clipboard, I would take notes on, on all my survey measurements. And then instead of fearing losing that piece of paper, when I get back to the shop, I would actually just take that thing, hold it out, take a picture of it, and then attach it here too. So uh, quotes and contracts, I want to come back to in a minute. Sign templates, this is just a bonus that we put in sign tracker. So you might have a lot of these things already, but if you don't, I mean, just feel free to download them. They're pretty cool. They're all vectorized. You could, you know, pop your logo in there. You can edit any of the text. So I would, you know, I just recommend, you know, downloading them. It's a great bank of, of designs and your designers, if, if you don't already have some of these, your designers will like them. And especially if you do uh, electric signs or outsource electric signs, there's a lot of them in here that are, great for that. I'll just show you a quick channel letter one here. Uh, let's see. And so this is neon, which not a lot of channel letters are neon these days, but there's a whole bank of LED ones too. Uh, but in any case, again, these these drawings can all be, vec uh, they're all vectorized, so they can be edited. Text can be edited. So, 
Okay, let's look at the forms. So forms, again, you have just a, a giant bank of, of work orders. So if you're, uh, let's say, you know, you're, you're, it's a graphic work order and you're wanting to, for the guys in the shop or you're wanting it to send out to a subcontractor, uh, it's a great way to, you know, you can, you know, check off what it is. You can put dimensions on there. Um, if, you, if you're hiring a vendor, you can put their information there. Uh, and it's great. And so once you fill this form out, you hit submit. And what it's going to do, it's going to take the form, send it back to the job, and then put it in the, in the history. So everything below available templates is really just a bank of templates. Everything up here where it says completed forms will be your completed forms. I'll show you. I mean, there's a lot of them in here. I would, again, recommend opening each one of them up when you have some time and see what they'd be useful for in your shops. I mean, some of them might not be useful for your particular workflow, but a lot of them probably will be. So let's let's take a look at, um, it, like say you're going out to the field to do a face change on a monument cabinet, a plexiglass face change. So you can open this up, you can go out, you can take, you know, write down all your dimensions, you can choose what kind of face it is, if it's plex or lexan or aluminum, um, you know, if it's a square cabinet or radius corners, you can take all kinds of notes. And then again, you know, you can submit it and save it. And then it's going to drive it back up to your completed forms. So uh, let's look at quotes and contracts. So quotes, like uh, like the the task templates, are, are template driven. So basically, and there's another video, another recorded webinar actually that you can watch on you know quotes and how to set them up and all that. So I recommend you watch that. But basically, it's template driven. And so you build these templates out for all different sign types and you can make super detailed, extensive ones for things like channel letters. Um, if you're this, like this particular one here, it says cores, we have a client that does beer signs. And so he wanted to set up basically brands of beer and then underneath each brand, the different types of signs. So I was showing him how to do that. That's why I have that there. But, uh, but anyway, so banners, for example, I'm just going to open this one up. It's super simple one banners four by eight and you'd already have this built out. So each of these, each of these categories, item categories, are basically where you can control your markup. And, and this is where you set up templates, you know, so when it comes, when you're doing this within the job, you can change anything here and it won't hurt the template that you create. So I can say, you know, I can say, I want this to be a 60% markup instead of 50. And you can add items too. So if I wanted to add a different item here, you know, I could, I could add, um, you know, posts, for example, you know, I could say, um, there's going to be four posts for this project. So you can add things. And again, it won't hurt the, um, it won't hurt the original template that you created in this, in the quoting setup. And the quoting setup again is under, under setups. You'll see it, uh, labor, same thing. So if I, if you know, Hey, a banner is going to take me an hour's worth of labor, but you wanted to add, let's say you wanted to add some design time, uh, some general design time, and I could come in and I can add two hours of design time. Uh, upcharges. So if you have a, if you have a salesperson, when you're setting up your template, you can automatically set up, you know, a commission, say 10%. And all that's going to do is it's going to go up here and it's going to add 10% evenly to each of these categories. Uh, you can also add additional. So say for example, this job came in and it was a rush job and you wanted to add an extra hundred dollars to it. You can do that too. Discounts, same thing. If you if you give a you know nice guy discount of five percent, it's just going to go up here and, and take it off evenly. Uh, extras, those are gonna, and and you can you'll learn a little bit more about this in the in the setup video for quoting. But extras could be things like you always charge twenty five dollars for a setup fee, or you you know you have a base permit price of one hundred and fifty dollars for the survey and two hundred fifty dollars for the permit. So if you wanted to break these things down at the bottom of the contract, itemize via customer, you'd do that here. Taxes, of course, if you sync with QuickBooks, all your tax codes are going to come over, uh, and then uh, then basically there's a quote number, there's sequential, and you can name this quote whatever you want. The description. You're going to pretty much have this already pre, you know, pre-typed out, but you can add to it too. So say, you know, you added posts and you added, you know, two hours of design 
and you wanted to kind of spell that out in the description. Notes and details, your customer doesn't see this. So say for example, it was a special order item and you wanted to uh, you know, maybe write a note on who you ordered it from, the part number, anything like that. The customer doesn't see this. But anything that you want to remember about this quote, if the customer comes back to you next year and says, hey, remember that post and panel sign I ordered from you or banner? I want another one of those. Then you have it all right here. Then we're going to save it and you're going to get your summary. Everything looks fantastic. Then you're going to generate a contract. It's going to take you to the contract summary page. Now, I will say too, inside of a job, so this job bills auto, you can have multiple products. So I can go back to quotes and do another quote for say door vinyl. I can do another quote for, um, you know, core plus signs. And then they would all show up here, bam, bam, bam. And I could just check them off and they're all going to go on to one contract. So let's go to contract notes. The customer does see this, you know, so thanks a bunch. Or let's say you were doing an electric sign project. You know, you want to make sure that there's going to be uh, ample access to the front of the store on the day of install or whatever you needed to communicate about the project to your customer. Then we're going to save it. And it's going to create a contract that you can download as a PDF and then attach it to an email and send it off with your artwork to the client for approval. So, so that is pretty much an overview of the, um, of the job flow portion of Sign Tracker. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to us in our chat tool. Again, it goes to the entire team. No question is a bad question. No suggestion is a bad suggestion. We're very appreciative to hear from you. Also on our marketing website, there are training videos that are a little bit more in depth for things like setting up the quoting or setting up the tasks. So anyway, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. Uh, I'm Joe and hope to hear from you soon.